Demand for meat is increasing, but the resources needed for meat production already use up a staggering 30% of the Earth's landmass. This man thinks we should make burgers without rearing and killing cows. You poke a cow in the butt, take a small sliver of muscle, extract stem cells that are in all our muscle cells and let them proliferate until you have a couple of billion. And then you can let them self-organize into muscle tissue, into muscle fibers. And then if you have 10,000 of these fibers, you basically put them in a patty. Does it actually taste like beef? It does. The texture is very similar. Ten people have tried it right now, so and they all live. Only ten people have tried it? Including my kids, yeah. You experiment on your kids. I like that. Why does it have to be beef or chicken or pork? Why can't it be nondescript protein flavoured with sauces? The fact is that 3% of the people right now are in Britain or in the Netherlands are vegetarian and they rely on meat replacers and vegetable proteins that sort of look and taste like meat but aren't quite it. Um, and that number hasn't changed in the last 35 years. If you use that sort of assumption that we have a craving, an innate craving for meat, then you would have to create something that's meat and not a substitute. I can't wait to have artificial meat, but what are the downsides? Well, you know, the downside is that you need to transform a traditional farming industry into a more high-tech type of uh, food industry. And that's something that we just need to get accustomed to that idea, but it is a change. Should animals be worried? Will there be any need to have real cows, sheep or pigs in the future? Uh, well, there will be, uh, at least to uh, donate the stem cells. Right, so they will have the, the very prestigious task of donating stem cells for uh, beef production or other sources of meat. And of course, you know, we, we could always keep them as pets. No, cows can never get through the cat flap. <laughs>